A man came home from work and found his three children outside, still in their pajamas, playing in the mud. The door of his wife's car was open, as was the front door to the house, and there was no sign of the dog. Proceeding into the entry, he found an even bigger mess. A lamp had been knocked over. In the front room, the TV was loudly blaring a cartoon channel. And the family room was covered with toys and various items of clothing. In the kitchen, dishes filled the sink, breakfast food was spilled on the counter, the fridge door was wide open, dog food was spilled on the floor, and it was a mess. He quickly headed upstairs, stepping over toys and more piles of clothes, looking for his wife. He was worried she might be ill or that something serious had happened. He was met with a small trickle of water as he made his way into the room that was coming out of the bathroom. As he peered inside, he found wet towels, scummy soap, and more toys thrown over the floor. Miles of toilet paper lay in a heap, and toothpaste had been smeared over the mirror and walls. As he rushed into the bedroom, he found his wife still curled up in bed in her pajamas, reading a novel. She looked up at him and smiled and asked how his day went. He looked at her bewildered and asked, what happened here today? She again smiled and answered, you know every day when you come home from work and you ask me what in the world I did all day? (laughs) Yeah. She said, well, today I didn't do it. (laughs) If you would like a copy of this, moms, that will be available for you. (laughs) Happy Mother's Day. I've found over the years of Christian ministries, I've taught oftentimes moms on Mother's Day and accoladed them and for all that they've done. And and, uh, I want you to know we want to do that today and we're honored to be in your presence. But today I want to give a message for everybody that has a mom. And I think it's important that you need to know you have a call to love your mother. And so today is a sappy message. It's one I don't preach a lot. I'm usually trying to step on every toe here, but what I'm telling you today is, I say I am, I'm trying to give a word that will. But here's the thing today. I I think it's a real practical application of the word and how important it is to love your moms. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 16. Sometime later, Two prostitutes came to the king to have an argument settled. Please, my lord, one of them began, this woman and I live in the same house. I I gave birth to a baby while she was with me in the house. And three days later, this woman also had a baby. We were alone and there were only two of us in the house. But her baby died during the night when she rolled over on it. Then she got up in the night and took my son from beside me while I was asleep. She laid her dead child in my arms and took mine to sleep beside her. And in the morning when I tried to nurse my son, he was dead. But when I looked more closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't my son at all. The other woman interrupted, it certainly was your son and the living child is mine. No, the first woman said, the living child is mine and the dead one's yours. And so they argued back and forth before the king. Then the king said, let's get the facts straight. Both of you claim the living child is yours, and each say that the dead one belongs to the other. All right, bring me a sword. So a sword was brought to the king. Then he said, cut the living child in two and give half to one woman and half to the other. Then the woman who was the real mother of the living child and who loved him very much cried out, oh no, my Lord, give her the child. Please don't kill him. But the other woman said, all right, he will be neither yours nor mine. Divide him between us. Then the king said, Do not kill the child, but give him to the woman who wants him to live, for she is his mother. When all Israel heard the king's decision, the people were in awe of the king, for they saw the wisdom God gave him for rendering justice. Now, we can look at the king and go, great job, king, but the fact is we all know the story could be very true. A real mom, regardless of themselves, cares about their kids. They love their children. They love their children with all that they are. A real mom loves. Come on, a real mom loves. I'm not talking a biological. I'm just talking a real mom loves. A real mom loves. John 19, verse 25. 
standing near the cross were Jesus' mother and his mother's sister Mary and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to this disciple, Here is your mother. And from then on, the disciples took her into his home. What I want you to see in that story is Jesus loved his mama. Jesus loved his mother. Mary witnessed the crucifixion. Jesus' mom saw her son, and she watched it all from the foot of the cross. I don't understand that, but I can only imagine what she must have felt. Jesus turns to John right before this and says, take care of her. He was looking after his mom. Take care of her. And he sees to it that his mom is going to be taken care of even though he was going to be gone, physically speaking. And as God, Jesus was dealing with eternal matters, but as man, Jesus was showing how important it was to take care of your mom. Take care of your mom. You can't willfully... Be wrong with your mom and right with God. Just spend a second thinking about that. If your mother's still alive, regardless of you're in her ages, you can love her. And here are some ways today to make sure that she knows that she's loved. Love your mother. Number one, if you're taking notes, this is a good one. You might pin it up on your refrigerator. You might pin it up somewhere. Moms, you might want to take it and give it to someone who wasn't here today. (laughs) Number one, love your mom verbally. Verbally. Men lack in the verbal area. I get that. I I mean, not all of us, but some of us do. And some will say, well, I show my love. I'm not going to say it. Every mom needs to hear the words, I love you. Every mom needs to hear that. Isaiah 43, 4. You are precious to me, you are honored, and I love you. That's God's word to us. He said it to us. Can we not say it to our moms? I I mean, some men would say, I'm just not comfortable with saying, well, just get uncomfortable then, but say it. Say, I love you. Tell your mom you love her. God loves us and told us so. 1 John 4, 19, we love each other because he first loved us. He loved us first. God did such a good job of showing us and communicating and telling us in his word that we are loved. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. He loved and he gave. So we've got to love verbally. Number two, we've got to love physically. We've got to show a physical love. Love. When's the last time you gave a big old hug to your mama? Now, don't crush her, but I'm just saying, a big old hug and, and maybe a kiss on the cheek or a, or a neck rub or just sit on the couch and hold her hand or, well, that's just weird. I, I'm, I'm giving you some direction today. Love her physically. She's the first person who ever touched you. She wrapped you up in her womb for months and you came out and her first priority was to hold you. She cuddled you, she stroked your head, she rubbed your feet, she squeezed your little cheeks. She she would grasp your finger and you'd grasp hers. And she did all these things. I mean, she even licked you with her thumb. Come on. Well, that wasn't, she licked her thumb and then she put it on your face. I told my daughter that don't do that. I saw her doing that the other day. Don't do that to your kids. She goes, I've earned the right. I don't care what you say, I'm going to do, I get that. When you were little, she'd say, give me some sugar, and you'd give her some, and that tongue may be sticking out and wet and sloppy and nasty, and she'd say, thank you. Whatever the case, I mean, she changed your diaper, she potty trained you, she held Kleenex for you to blow your nose, she wiped food off your face for years longer than she should have. I mean, you just think this through, she was constantly touching you, and she may... She may have even handed you off to someone else, but what I'm telling you is you need to love your mama physically. You need to go give her a hug. She deserves your touch. Now, if, if she means more to you than flowers and candy and 
eating out or a diamond neck, that's all good. Just make sure that you understand she needs to know that. And so you love her verbally and you love her physically. Number three, love her patiently. One of the fruits of the Spirit, mothers have an incredible job with no pay. No position in business, in the business world, compares to the physical, emotional, and spiritual commitment of motherhood. Let me just give you some advice today. Don't ever make the mistake of asking a lady, do you work or stay at home? (laughs) The only thing worse is asking when you're due and you're not 100% sure she's pregnant. I mean, there's some things you just don't do. Many ladies today actually do work outside of the home and they come home and work at the home. They have a full-time job wherever they are all the time. Here's the point. In spite of all she does for us, we often become impatient. We get used to her taking care of everything for us and we get outraged that our favorite shirt isn't clean and maybe not ironed. You don't have your favorite cookie sitting on the counter. And and she makes dinner, and then you make a mistake of saying, don't you usually make that over rice? Where's the rice? Something like that. And you end up going in this, come on, young people, she's picking you up at school because you don't like to ride the bus, and you're yelling at her for being five minutes late. Maybe, in fact, this message will step on some toes. But the fact is, you got to be careful that you're communicating love all the time to your moms. Love her patiently. She's tender to your needs, and we're taking advantage of our moms oftentimes. Young people, hear me today. It's not right for you to be more kind and considerate and patient with your friend's mom than your own mom. I've watched that for years. My friends would be so kind to my mom, and they treated their mom like dirt. And I just, this is, it's just the facts. And it, young people, if you treated your friends like you treat your mom, you wouldn't have any friends. Your mom deserves better, and she's not a rug to wipe your negative thoughts on. For us adults that are living with moms, in our day-to-day life, love her patiently. Dobson read a letter on Focus on the Family Radio uh, here a few years ago, and and uh, it was written from an 80-year-old woman's perspective on her birthday. And it really reminded me of one of my grandmothers that have gone on to be with Jesus, and she just always wanted me to sit on the porch with her and visit. That's all she wanted to do. We go in her house, that's all she wanted to do. Let me read this letter. To all my children, I suppose my upcoming birthday started my thoughts along these lines. This is a good time to tell you that what I truly want are things I can never get enough of. Yet they are free. I want the intangibles. I would like for you to come and sit with me and for you to be relaxed. We can talk. Or we can be silent. I just like to be together. I need your patience when I don't hear what you say the first time. I know how tiresome it is to always be repeating, but sometimes I've got to ask you to repeat. I need your patience when I think too much about the past with my slowness, slowness and my set ways. I want you to be tolerant with what the years have done to me physically. Please be understanding about my personal care habits. I spill things. I lose things. I get unduly excited when I try to figure out my bank statements. I can't remember what time to take my medication or if I even took it already. I take too many naps. Sometimes sleep helps to pass the day. Well, there you have it. Time, patience, and understanding. These are priceless gifts that I want. Finally, in his letter, the apostle Paul wrote, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And she said, I know I can too. It's a wonderful feeling to know his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he cares for me. I guess being old isn't so bad after all. I love you all, Mom. 
love her verbally, verbally, physically, and patiently. Number four, love her attentively. Attentively. Romans 15, 5 says, May God who gives this patience and encouragement help you live in complete harmony with each other as is fitting for followers of Christ Jesus. Too many times with moms, all we want to do is get our words in and we're not attentive to what they have to say. Mothers, listen, as you pour out your heart, she has a sympathetic ear and always has. And even as an adult, you've gone to her when you want someone who will really listen and understand and she'll always be on your side. I can promise you that anybody's mama who is already with Jesus, everyone would be like, I wish I could just call her and listen. I wish she could just tell me something else. I wish I could call her and speak because she always listened to me. See, it's no wonder we like to talk to mom. She listens. Moms have this incredible ability to listen. But as you grow older, it's your turn to listen, to be her rock. It's payback time. As she gets older, the more you need to love her attentively because she's always, she's always ready to hear. But the fact is, at some point, she needs you to be the one hearing and listening to her. Now, this may be a thought, but she's always complaining. Yes, just like you did. She talks about herself. She asks the same questions over and over. I, I get that. I get that, but you need to be attentive. In their older days, our parents have many fears, anxieties, and they may not tell you about them. But we've got to treat them with the same listening ear attentively as they gave us for you. Are you hearing me today? Come on, one day you'll be in their shoes and you're hoping your kids will be doing the same for you. There's got to be an understanding here. Love her verbally, physically, patiently, and attentively. Number five. It's quiet here, but I think it's because we're hearing what needs to happen. Number five, love her gratefully. 1 Thessalonians 3, 9, how we thank God for you. How we thank God for you. Because of you, we have great joy as we enter God's presence. I love this story. An elementary science class has been studying magnets and how metal objects are attracted to them. They spent a lot of time studying this. And at the end of the semester, the teacher put on the exam question, six letters starts with M picks up things, what am I? Over half the children wrote what? Mother. Six letters, mother. They, they've been studying magnets, but kids couldn't get mother out of their mind. And I love that. Come on, moms need a sincere thank you. Not just today, but every day. From a genuinely grateful, thankful heart. And here's the real cool thing, even at times when it's not expected. You know, there are times we do it because we have to. Well, I understand that when you're three and four years old. Tell them thank you. Tell them you're grateful. Tell them. And if you don't, you take them in the other room and you whip their ear in. And then they come back out and they be made to. At some point, it's nice that you grow up and mature to a place that you're not getting whooped if you don't. You're doing it because you're really grateful. You're really thankful. You're really excited. Let her know how grateful you are for her. I, I'm going to tell you this morning, I, I got up early, and here's why. And this is my, my story. But every Sunday, for I can't even tell you how many years, I think it's 20 years, since my mom got her first phone that she could text on. Every Sunday, my mom sends me a text. My brother's sitting right beside her today, and she does it to all of us. Boy, I thought I was the only one. He's sitting here going like that. Yeah, he knew it. Oh, well. Every Sunday, my mom sends me a text that she loves me. And that she's, well, this morning, I got up early and I sent it before her normal one and told her. But I wanted her to know that I'm grateful for her. Not because I had to, but because I wanted to. 
See, there's a gratefulness that we've got to have when we're showing and communicating love. Come on, love your mother. Love your mother. Number six. This could go all day. Isn't this fun? Love her. Come on, moms. Isn't this fun? Love her generously. There's nothing too good for your mom. We could never repay. We could never repay for all that she sacrificed for us. But we ought to die trying before she does. We really should. She didn't spend on herself unless all your needs were met. She could easily do without, and now it's time for her to have something she wants. She cleared her schedule so she can run you around. I mean, she gave up opportunities so you could have more opportunities. I got all these illustrations because I thought they were wonderful, but a math question was asked of some students or some kids, and, and, and they said, the, the question was state your answer as a fraction. And here was the question. If there's nine people at your dinner table and one apple pie, how much does each one get? And the little boy said, one-eighth. And she said, well, you don't know your fractions very well. He said, yes, I do. You just don't know my mother very well. If there's that many at the table, only one pie, she's not going to eat a piece. See, that there's a generosity that moms walk in, and at some point, we need to learn that from them and be loving them generously. Number seven, and this is the last one. I, I could come up with some more if you just keep wanting them, but love her honorably. Exodus twenty twelve, honor your father and mother. Then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Now, this is binding. See, as long as your mom lives, you are to honor her. As long as she lives. Another command says, children, obey. Obey. Now, this is a non-binding application here because when you leave home and make your own choices, you may not obey what their choice would have been when you're on your own. And I understand that. But honoring is binding, and it's different than obeying. If the husband is the head of the home, then the mother's the heart of the home. Don't break her heart. Honor your mom. Honor your mom. And, and, and I know that it might be a thought here today, okay, yeah, but pastor, you don't know my mom, and she wasn't very honorable. Well, Good, good thought, I guess. The Bible says, though, absolutely nothing about that qualification being necessary for you to honor her. So, well, my mom just wasn't honorable. Well, wah, wah. That has nothing to do with what God said. He says to honor your mom. Honor your mom. And I would love to, and I did, sit there and write a bunch about what honor means, but how about you do your own work? What does it mean to honor What does it mean to honor? By the way, where it says honor your father and mother, it's the only one of the Ten Commandments that actually comes right there with a promise. You do that, and it has a promise that's built in a blessing of having a full life in the land that God's given you. She honored you by stepping out of her life to be a mom, and you need to honor her. And here's what honor means, and I won't get into a lot. It means to show respect, appreciation, and esteem for. That's what honor means. So you can can kind of put your own wording there, but it's important. A mother. When you're a child, she walks before you to set an example. When you're a teenager, she walks behind you to be there should you need her or to flip your ear. When you're an adult, she walks beside you so that as two friends, you can enjoy life together. There's nothing better than having a mom who's your friend. And I'm just telling you, I wasn't going to cry this morning, but it's important to know whatever season you're in with your mom that you love her. You love her. Whether she's walking in front of you, she's walking right behind you. (laughs) What? Or she's 
already into adulthood with you and you've moved into a friendship. Honor them and love them. It's important today to know whatever season you're in, love them, love them. We need to watch that we're never too busy for mom. Come on. This is a busy world. We're never too busy for mom. If Jesus could take time and and great effort on the way to the cross before his death to spend some time, mom, I got you taken care of. I got you taken care of. I love you, mom. Right here's your your son that's going to take care of you. Now, I'm sure she's going, he's not my son. But what he was doing was getting a point across. I love you. I love you. Can we do that today? Can we just love our moms? Church, if your mom's still living, love her. Come on, for those of you whose mom's not here, I, I know you're not in your It'd be awesome to say one more time, Mom, I love you. I love you. Don't miss an opportunity while they're still here.